If your skin is looking musty crusty, you're in the right place. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a super easy way to approach painting skin. So first things first, we've gotta put down a base color and the color you choose is going to be dependent on the complexion of the person. And also the color and intensity of the light source is going to play a big role in how the skin appears. Like if you're at a sunset, your skin will look more orange. So with all that being said, I'm gonna start off with this brown color. Next, I'm going to put in the direct light, which in this case is going to be coming down from the sun, which is why I shifted the hue to this slightly more yellow color. And you'll also see me putting a transition color between the light and dark. Then add in a bit of shadow. By the way, all the painting, rendering and blending you'll see in this video is done with the hard round pressure opacity brush. It's literally just one of the default brushes that come with Photoshop. Pretty much every other digital painting software should have a similar brush. Now for my favorite part, the ambient light or the environmental light, whatever you want to call it, this is where things start to get good. This is what really separates the professionals from the beginners. This is what separates the kings and queens from the plebs. Okay. You may have noticed that I have a blue background here. Well, this is meant to be the sky. Do you know what that means? It means that the color of the sky is going to be visible within the parts of the skin that are in the shade. So what I do here is color pick the background color and then lightly lay in a bit of it. Easy as that. And the skin ball is looking more three dimensional and like it actually exists as a part of its environment. Now, the next thing we're going to do is introduce some bounce light. When the light from the sun hits an object, little light particles bounce off in every direction, providing a weaker form of light. And what will happen if the object has a strong color, like grass for example, the light will take on some of that color. For this example, we'll pretend that the ground is sand or something. You'll get some of that orangey color mixing with the sphere. Now we move on to the paint over phase. What I'm doing here is polishing the painting using the color picker tool to pick up the colors I've already laid down. I like to think of it as though I'm sculpting out the sphere pushing the colors around. Okay, so let's move on to applying this to an actual person. We'll start off with the base color again. Oh, and uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to be using the exact same colors as the previous exercise. Now I'm going to lay in some direct light and I'm imagining that the sunlight is shining over her shoulder, which means a lot of her is going to be in the shade. You'll just get parts of her face and shoulder being hit by the light. So this part is pretty quick and easy. You can make the lighting less harsh by placing a middle color between the light and dark. Also, if you want, you can just blend the edges with the smudge tool if you're going for a more soft look. But for this particular example, I wanted to try for a more hard edge style. Now I lay in the shadows in the places where not as much light would be getting to, such as around the eyes, in the ears, under the nose, under the chin, and there'd also be some shadows cast from the hair. Next up, I start to introduce some of the blue light from the sky onto parts of her face. I'm focusing mainly on the areas that'll catch the most light from the sky. These will be parts of the face most exposed, such as the cheeks and the nose. This is the general zone that I'm working in. Now I start laying in that warm orangey bounce light, painting in the areas that would be most exposed to it, such as the lower half of the face, as well as under the eyebrows. I'm kind of winging it here based off of past experience and what I think will look good, but if you're ever in doubt, check out some reference. You can see here where the bounce light from this dude's yellow shirt is hitting certain parts of his face. So we now move on to the paint over phase where you will take all of the colors you've laid down previously and start sculpting out the face more. blending and smoothing out areas that look too messy. This is all about polishing the painting and making corrections to any parts of the skin you're unhappy with. You can also see here how I'm adding some subsurface scattering to this ear that's being hit by the sunlight. Subsurface scattering is when the light passes through something that is semi-translucent, like skin for example, and you get this kind of look. 
It can really sell the idea that what you're painting is an actual, living, breathing human being. And not just some creepy first aid dummy. You can also paint over the line art to make it blend in more with the skin. And so here's a comparison with and without paint over. Paint over, no 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 paint over. Thanks for watching. I love you. Okay. <laughs>